Okay, I think I'm live now. Hi, you guys. It's Mark, and I'm in my living room. And I honestly don't really know how to use this thing, so I'm going to just sit and sew, and hopefully you guys will be showing up. So um, I'm leaving my living room. I'm going to my dining room. Everything is a mess since I've been sick, so I haven't really cleaned very much. Um, but um, come with me, and I'm going into my dining room, which is set up like my studio, because my studio is such a wreck, I can't even get up there. So that's our little secret. So anyway, let me go up and, um, or let me get up and go into the dining room, and I'll tell you what I'm doing. So, well, I guess I don't have to wait, right? So um, here's what's going on. I have to do this Quilt of Valor quilt. And uh, that's going on auction on May 26th. And let's see if this will work this way. Yeah, good. Hi, Garen. Hi, Jenny. So anyway, I have to do this Quilts of Valor quilt. And, um, and so I'm making a background of, of patchwork on, that's going to be in, um, on point. And I had the worst time. I couldn't figure it out. Now, here are the two blocks. Hold on. Here are the two blocks I'm making. Hi, Mary. Hi, Laura. So anyway, here are the two blocks I'm making, and they're going to go on point. Now, this is the one I think I showed on Facebook the other day that, um, that I sprayed bleach to clean my, my um, <laughs> cutting mat, and I screwed it up completely, and I'm a hot mess. So um, anyway, hi, Jill. So anyway, um, these are the two blocks, and they're going on point. And, um, but, I mean, look, an idiot can make these blocks, right? Look at these tremors. Do you see the tremor? All right, so anyway, an idiot. Hi, Sharon. So anyway, uh, they're so easy to do, yet I couldn't figure it out. I kept adding and subtracting and subtracting and adding and adding and subtracting and subtracting and adding. Nothing. Nothing was working. I couldn't figure it out. I was going out of my mind. It took me all day to do one block. And then it still wasn't the right size. It's supposed to be five and a half unfinished. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Mary. So anyway, hi, Laura. So anyway, um, what happened was I did, I just thought, ah, oh, screw it. I'm not doing this anymore because you know me, I don't really have much patience. So anyway, I'm talking to my friend Bonnie. I'm FaceTiming my, I'm FaceTiming my friend Bonnie over and over and over again. And what happens is, <laughs> after three days of this madness, where I couldn't get a simple five, hi Sarah, hi Joanne, I couldn't get a, a single um, block made, Bonnie said, did you try your, your, your needle, you know, your needle moving over to the left or the right, hi Nance. Anyway, what happened was, I, well, it's honestly, look, here's what I have here, look, I'll show you, it's my baby lock, let me turn on the light here. Uh, whoops. Yeah, there it is. So, we're, I don't even know where the damn thing is. Okay, so you see, it's a single hole foot. So, I, I look, I know that my needle moves. Um, uh, I know that my needle moves. Um, hi, Mary. Hi, Lorelai. Hi, Sue. Hi, Steve. Uh, Stevie and Darlena and Dory. So, anyway, I know that my needle moves, but I didn't know that it moved with a single, you know, a single hold um foot. I only thought it moved like, you know, for the zigzag. So, listen, I've been using this machine since, uh, you know, Fred Flintstone taught me how to use it and then forever, this baby lock, which I love. It's the Aspire. It's an older model, but if you can pick one up, uh, even use it, it's great. Hi, now. So anyway, I um, started, uh, I started looking because I've never had to do it before. So, you know, with these computerized machines, as you can see, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I'm like, oh my God. Hi, Andrea. So I was just, uh, hi, Sue. I was just going crazy. Hi, Ellen. Eileen, sorry. And Helen Marie. Hi, Helen Marie. Uh, and Donna. So anyway, I was going nuts. So I, I get the manual. Of course, you know, I am a man after all. So God forbid I should actually read a, a manual for a sewing machine. And here, don't you think that when I had my machine service, you know, my year, my yearly, my every eight year service to get it cleaned. Hi, Willa and Donna and Linda Lumdebono. I thought that I would, uh, I, you know, I, that it would just be set to where it always was. Hi, Desiree and Bobby. So anyway, uh, can you guys see me? By the way, because Bobby says he can't see me. Hi, Kate. Oh, yeah, Kate can see me. Okay, so somebody's seeing me. So anyway, 
Um, uh, so the door behind me is not, that's going to be a glass door like this one, but it's not done yet. It's not painted yet. So anyway, hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Irene. So, um, anyway, it was that when they cleaned my machine, they moved my needle by an eighth of an inch. Hi, Andrea and Adrian and Dory and, Mar and Donna. So I, so nothing was working. So everything was off by an eighth of an inch and I thought I was going nuts. Well, finally I got it. So let me show you what I'm going to be working on today. You know, I have to do this, and, and the um, and it, as I said, it's a uh, it's a um, it's an auction quilt. Now I don't know whether this auction is open to anyone. You'll have to ask uh, Marianne Fawns, who asked me to do it. But there are a lot of really great quilters that have been invited to do this auction quilt. Um, and I wish I could actually look into the, the thing. Where is that? So there's a lot of really good people who are doing auction quilts. Uh, one of them is. Um, you know, Victoria Findlay Wolf, Alex Anderson. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, and, and there's like big name people. And so I'm really honored to be asked in the first place. But uh, my, it's, the theme is America the Beautiful. Hi, hi, Fritzy. Hi, oh, there's, okay, hi, Sandy. Hi, Maria. Hi, Donna. Oh, it's Donna Reed Montebello. All right, so anyway, so I, um, I'm like, well, what the hell is America the Beautiful? I mean, I know it, but it's only supposed to be 30 inches. And I'm like, well, gosh, what could it be? So then I thought, well, you know, I started working with flags, and I started working with, you know, you know, Quilts of Valerie kind of uh, themes. And I thought, you know, this is kind of creepy. I mean, first of all, I don't think personally I'd be able to top my Quilts of Valor original quilt. So I'm like, well, I don't want to, you know look like a big wuss and, and do something that was ugly. Um, see, Sarah can't get the picture either. I'm not sure. I think some of you are getting it and some of you are not. Um, so it might be your server or it might be the age of your computer, but I'm not quite sure. Wow, there are 56 of you. That's crazy. So anyway, so what happened was I just thought, all right, after many sleepless nights, because, you know, I have nothing to do except sleep and eat, and all I'm doing is eating and sleeping, um, I thought, well, America the Beautiful is just anything, right? I mean, it's everything. I mean, if you could literally, and I come from the mindset where everything you look at is beautiful, and I think it's, it's or can be, and I think it can be, that, that really hit home when I was really sick. And I thought, well, and Jeff and I just had that conversation yesterday on our way home from grocery shopping, where I, I, you know, he was saying, wouldn't it be nice if you could just kind of brainwash yourself to think everything was beautiful and everybody was nice? Oh, I know what we were thinking of. Remember that movie um, with Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow and Jack Black, where, where he fell in love with Gwyneth Paltrow because he took a spell, but it really the woman was like super, well, she was built like me, so, um, and she looked like me, and, <laughs> but he thought she was a supermodel, I can't remember what the name of that, uh, that movie was, but, but Jeff said, wouldn't it be nice if we could all go through the world, um, seeing only beautiful things, even in its often ugliness. Hi, Norma, so, I thought, to myself, you know, and I said, you can. I mean, it's it, looking at beautiful things or, or creating beauty in your life. Shallow, shallow hell. Thanks, Maria. Shallow hell. You really can. And if you really kind of take the time and, and kind of smell the roses and you're not just like judging, 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 which I love to do, by the way, but I, I'm trying to do a lot less of it. Um, you can really see beautiful things and even the ugliness and, and you know, even sadness can be beautiful. So anyway, so that was, that was my motivation for this particular quilt. So this one, I, I was driving through on my way to, or the way back from my, um, my last uh, hospital visit a couple of weeks ago, and I thought, oh, I, I got it. I was driving through the Meadowlands, which is right outside of like Newark Airport, right on the other side of the, the Holland Tunnel. And um, and it's all being built up, and that big ugly mall is there that Chris Christie's trying to get opened, and Brendan Byrne Arena, and all those kind of places. And they have kind of were destroying the, these meadowlands with these beautiful animals and all these plants and whatever. So I decided, hi Patricia, 
Hi, and oh, hi, Andy, and um, Andrew Dighton, and PJ, and uh, Mary, and everybody. So anyway, um, so I I remember going through there when I was doing my last pilot <clears throat> for um this show at for CBS in Manhattan, and every time I would go through the Meadowlands, the train, I would see these great, amazing animals and or birds. So I decided that my America the Beautiful was America the Beautiful preserving uh, the United States, preservation. So my quilt is going to look like this. Now this is a copy because this is what I'm going to be doing in, and this is a secret, so nobody's supposed to know, so it's just us, so don't tell us so. Because I'll know if you told. So anyway, this is going to be the the um, the pattern, for instance, and this is thirty by thirty. But this is going to be my um, what's the word? My, my for my applique. All right. So the background is going to be this on point. Don't forget. This is easy stuff with this kind of like bluish gray and this gray. And then uh, this is. Hold on. I hope you can see it. This is my applique. So that's what it's going to be. And they're in different colors. The applique, the, the leaves on the top are gold. Uh, the cat and nine tails are kind of a brownish, like a baby poop brown. And of course the crane is going to be white. So on, the, on that, um, on that, um, on that background. Now let me show you. I'll get the other, the other things for you. The other colors. Hold on. They're right over here. So these are the other colors. So this is going to be the leaves, and this is going to be the cat o' nine tails, and of course the background. So and then of course the white, of course. So that's that. So what do you think? Do you like it? Do you think it works? Because it's not really America the Beautiful, but it yeah heron Helen Helen Marie yeah it's a heron. Um, it's one thing since I've been home from the hospital that I haven't eaten. Um, so anyway, uh, that's what, that's what it's going to be. So do you think it fits? Do you think it fits? All right, so you will not believe what Mary, Kidney Mary, my kidney donor, and, um, and I, and <laughs> my friend, Bonnie Esmond Shea, did the other day. <laughs> You're going to die when I, when I tell you this, but I can't help it. So I'm working on this project that is now... Another secret, but it's something that I'm doing for love and not for a magazine, not for anything, just because I want to do it. And that is, um, um, Patricia, that is so not too hard for you. It is so not too hard for you. This is so simple and idiot could do it. Thus, I'm doing it. All right, so I, I said, listen, I called up. I was, I don't know where I was. I was on my way home from something and I called. Uh, I left a message with um, Kidney Mary, and I said, I'm going to be there in an hour. Be ready. And then I called my friend. Um, then I called my friend. Yeah, you know what, Sandy? I thought that's true. It is my interpretation of what they asked for. Sorry, I'm, I'm skipping back and forth. I'm trying to read and talk. And, you know, I don't like slowing down my talk at all. But anyway, yeah, it is my interpretation. And I do think America the Beautiful is, is preserving our our lands, especially when, you know, the government wants to start fracking the state parks or, you know, the national parks and all that kind of stuff. It's just gross. So somebody needs to speak for them. So anyway, and, and you know me, I'm always speaking for something. So anyway, so I said, get ready. And then I called my friend Bonnie, which is so George Jetson, because Bonnie is a little older than I am. I think she's 70, maybe, maybe just a little bit older than that. But, um, but Bonnie and I are like George and Jane Jetson. We never, ever speak on the phone, but we speak every day on FaceTime. And I would prefer talking to people on FaceTime. Um, and so we talk every day on FaceTime. So I called her from my car, and I said, you know what, Norma, I do too. I like that it's not literal. So I'm, I may be the only one without any red, white, or blue in it, right? But you know what? That's the breaks, and maybe that'll help boost my... Um, my uh, money, you know, the, the auction for, for Quilts of Valor Foundation. Um, and now, and I don't think, Donna, I don't think the accidental bleaching works for me. It doesn't work for me. The, you guys, remember I told you I was cleaning my, my um, uh, 
I don't know, cutting mat, and I sprayed a little Clorox bleach, and these were all sitting on the table. I had piles of them and all my fabric strips and stuff already cut, and I got this, what almost came out, I got this stuff all over my quilt block, so now I'm starting over from square one. But anyway, um, hi Alicia, nice to see you. I haven't seen you in so long. Hi Susie. Hey, uh, it's nice to see you. It's been a long time, and she's going to be 69 in a couple of weeks. Age or position? Oh, sorry. Anyway, so, uh, anyway, um, oh, happy birthday, Pat. I remember you. It was your birthday, but you're 300, right? No. <laughs> 69. Happy birthday. So, anyway, um, I got them ready, and so we're getting in the car. Guess where we went? We went to this place in Bartow, Pennsylvania, which is just a little north of Philadelphia. And we went to the National Shrine of St. Padre Pio, which just killed me. Now, um, it was the funniest thing. Uh, it's just the funny, what? Linda Lundabona says that my approach starts an important conversation. Linda Lundabona, what is my approach? <laughs> because I just need to get the damn quilt done. What is my approach, Linda Lundabono? Anyway, um, I think that, uh, so anyway, we go to this, this shrine in the middle of nowhere. Now, apparently, there is this family whose daughter was healed through the intercession of Padre Pio, which helped him become a saint, which is all kind of blah, blah, blah. And Padre Pio, frankly, I've seen a lot of stuff on him. He's not really warm and fuzzy, and he kind of made me a little... Um, uh, I don't know, a little uncomfortable, maybe because he was just so dictatorial, but he was also had this bilocation thing going on that he could be two places at one time and all this kind of, you know, Catholic hocus pocus and mysticism, which I love and abhor. But anyway, I took uh, these two. Um, hey, you, Amy Bell Bueller, <clears throat> why don't you come over? I'm just going to be sitting here. Come on over. You're not so far. Um, anyway, um, so we get in, we go there and we see this most beautiful, and by the way, it's in the middle of nowhere. I, it's really just acres and acres and then this, this shrine in the middle of nowhere. And the last time I was there, they had his confessional and I just wanted to get a relic, right? That's what I wanted. Now, I thought relics were, um, <laughs> I thought relics were pieces of like bone or pieces of, of cloth that they wore or whatever. Well, according to the Catholics, there are three degrees. There's the first degree, which is a piece of bone or, you know, his teeth or his head or something like that. The second one is something that he actually owned, like his habit or his Bible or his table or something like that. And third degree is anything else. So if you touch a piece of fabric to anything else or just bring it into a shrine, that automatically becomes a third degree. Uh, relic, and you'll see what I'm doing in a in a few weeks, I hope. But um, so that was that, and um, so here I am taking Mary and, and um, uh, Bonnie to this place, and they had the most beautiful stained glass window, which we thought. And as we got closer, it was all this diachromatic glass. It was a mosaic, but it had it was mixed with mirrors, and I thought, what a neat um, thing to do. Uh, because it looked like you could see right through it, but you were actually seeing behind you. It was really, really beautiful. But then we went in. They have a museum of his, like, you know, he had a stigmata, which, of course, I always prayed for when I was a kid. Um, but also, I'm, you know, a gay kid. I don't want blood all over me. But um, anyway, um, although it would be kind of an honor. But I, anyway, so we went in and we looked at all this stuff. And they had a first-class relic. So I touched my piece, my fat quarter of uh, fabric. And it was a peppered cotton. I, I put a peppered cotton fat quarter on um, a first-degree relic of uh, St. Padre Pio. And then we left and we went to the Emmaus Bakery, which, by the way, it's right off of 78 in downtown Emmaus, who have the biggest donuts you have ever seen in your life. And I ate two of them while I was sitting there waiting for Bonnie and Mary to make their orders. And then I bought three more and brought them home to Mr. Electric. And I had to put them in the trunk because I would have eaten them all the way home. All right. So anyway, I'm going to start quilting and well, I'll talk to you about some other stuff. And, you know, this is really um, here's how I'm doing my, my piecing. Um, I'm doing it more like a barn raising. So I am actually sewing my little strips to my larger strip, and then I'm cutting them, and I'm doing the same here, cutting them, and then cut, putting, adding these strips on. So that way, so I first do this one, 
where I do two sides, and then I do these two where I do one side. And then I add my sides, and that's it. It's a really super easy thing, and I'm thinking that maybe I will um, actually finish the damn thing, because, oh my god, this has been a nightmare nightmare but okay so I'm gonna I have to finish it because it's due uh, May the 15th otherwise I'm gonna have Linda Lum de Bono Bonnie and um, and my friend Amy Bell Bueller over here to, to kind of help uh, all right so this is the tremor I'm talking about and this is you know all, honestly I don't really get tremors like this this badly sometimes I do but to, of course today that I'm on this thing um, I am so anyway Oh, Mary, I can't wait to hear your donut story. Um, and, uh, oh, Violet, let me see. Let me, oh, you, Mary wants to see Violet. Violet! Violet's the, the smart pug. Come here, Violet, bye! I don't know, she probably ate all of Tolb's food and is now just sleeping. She's here. I don't know why she's not coming out. Hmm, she's sleeping. She's somewhere around here. So anyway, I'm just going to sew this. Now, you know, because it's not my quilt. If it were my quilt, I'd be flying through this damn thing. And I wouldn't be using a little... I put um, I put some tape here, some uh, painter's tape, to keep my quarter of an inch. And I did that mainly because I told you how my... my uh, I couldn't get the right... The right... Uh, the right... Uh, seam allowance. So... Um, so now, I, but because it's not mine, because it's going to be, uh, you know, auctioned off, and I feel like it has to be perfect. Like, I'm going to be with all these, like, really great people, and I'm, I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> you know, they're all art quilters and stuff like that. Here's me. I've built my reputation on being a smartass. I, I you know, and, and so... Um, Anyway, that's that. Oh, hey, do you want to see my um, the cross stitch that I designed? I, I'm almost finished with it, and I'd like to get your opinion as well. So could you hold on for one second? Thanks. Hold on. I'll be right back. Give me one second. Hi, I'm back. Hi, Reno. So anyway, let me see where that damn Violet is. Hold on. Violet? Violet? Your mother wants to see you. This is it. Come on, Violet. Bye. Mary Shilke's dog, Betty is Violet's mother. Um, okay, they both went up. This is Tulip, who can't see and who can't hear, and who doesn't know. She's probably not long for this world. Say hello, Tulip. She's smiling, she loves the camera. And this, come here, Bob, come here. Come here, just say hello. Oh, you little wild thing. And this is Violet the Wonder Dog. Oh, she's a wild thing, and she thinks <laughs> she's, do you hear Tulip's gagging for breath? And she's a wild thing. Uh, oh, her mother's name was Pugly Betty. But boy, I love this Violet. She's smart and she's rough. All right. So, uh, oh, I was telling you about the cross stitch. So anyway, Kidney Mary's daughter's being married on January the 11th. So I just told her, besides the gift, that I would make her ring bearer pillow which I'm ready to hang myself because I thought I would cross stitch it and I haven't cross stitched in like 20 years so I um listen to Tulip she's so going soon um anyway I, uh, I so I designed this thing and you know sometimes when you design on paper and then you go to put it into practice you know into use to actually do the the design it doesn't quite come out the way you want it to come out. So that's what was happening here. So even though I designed it one way, this is what's happened to it. And I, I like it, but um, I think I'm going to do another one uh, later um, and probably end up selling the pattern. But these are done in, in Caitlin, which is Kenny Mary's daughter's uh, colors. And this is why I want your opinion. So um, hold on. Here we go. This is the front of it. 
and her colors are ivory and this like really off purple. And um, do you see those? So I just am adding, and it's for, hold on, this is the right thing. And it's for Joel, or Caitlin and Joel, which is probably backwards. And it is all these different specialty stitches. And then I added pearls. I'm adding more pearls here. But this is where I, you know, I bought little seed beads to put in here. And I love these hearts. They were so easy and fun to do. Um, but I, I, and that, these, and, you know, all these are specialty stitches, but they're really easy. I mean, you could do it. And so when I do my next one, you can um, do it along with me. I'll just put up the pattern and you can do it with me. But um, anyway, so there's this part in here that I had wanted to put beads in. Now the beads really matched almost perfectly Caitlin's bridal gown dresses. But when I got them home, I wasn't quite sure that um, I liked them myself with this. So I'm gonna put a few down. And of course I've got no quilting done and this is still due. It's not like the, the, the date has changed because I'm on here. And I'm only gonna be on here for a couple more minutes. I thought it would be kind of fun. Um, so these are the little purple seed beads, and I thought I was just, and I have the damn shakes today, which just make me angry, but I thought I would just put them, oh, where the hell are they? Oh, there we go. I knew I couldn't be on this thing for long without swearing. All right, so I thought I would just put them all the way around, and I want to know what you think. Do you think they, do you think they actually match? Take a look. Can you see that? Where are we? So do you think that purple matches? They're a little darker than these anchor threads that I used. Um, I don't know. Do you think it matches? And by the way, can I just tell you this? That anchor thread sucks. Do never ever use anchor thread. It is the shittiest thread I've ever used um, in my life uh, for, for a cross stitch. Sorry, Anchor, but it, it like pulled apart, it shredded, it just made me crazy. Um, and I just hated it. And all the way through, I'm like, that damn Caitlin, she needs to get a different color for her gown. And if I ever do this again for anyone, which I doubt it, so Mary's uh, daughter, uh, Jill, better not be getting married anytime soon. But um, I have to tell you that um, I'm going to have the... Uh, the bride picked different colors. I don't know. So, so Melissa, you like the open space. Um, that's interesting. I, I'm kind, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like something breaking it up a bit. I don't know. And, you know, Carrie thinks they're a little darker, too, but she thinks that looks good. You, well, I showed Kidney Mary, and I showed my friend Bonnie, and they both said it worked. But um, I think that... Uh, you know, it's all in the color family. And by the way, so meanwhile, I have, yeah, Patricia, I will never use anchor threads again. But it was the only thing, because Caitlin's gowns for these bridesmaids are so beautiful. Marsha Hahn said, hi, Marsha. Marsha says she doesn't like it. I mean, she likes the plain space, too. Well, and don't forget, there's going to be, you know, a ribbons, a silk ribbons coming out of here to hold the damn rings and blah, 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 blah. Now, here's what I'm planning to do with this, just so you know. I am going to make a pillow, but I'm saving, that's why I put all this fabric here. I'm actually saving the fabric and folding it in and then putting a different backing on this, right, for the little pillow. And, and oh, by the way, as Jeff Turner says, you know, you're obsessing about this and nobody's going to look at the damn pillow anyway, and I'm, he's absolutely right. So anyway, um, so I'm going to fold all this fabric under like a package and then put a different backing on it, like a cheap, you know, like a Joanne Z fake linen or whatever, right? But I'm going to hand stitch it, and I'm also going to put a little border on it. Now, here's why. Because after the um, wedding, I'm going to uh, deconstruct the pillow, and that way I have enough fabric to stretch it and frame it, so that way uh, Caitlin and Joel can uh, put you know, this, remember their wedding as a result of having this in a frame hanging on a wall somewhere, as opposed to a pillow that you'll never see again. Um, and uh, for marriage number two, we could always get rid of the 
the J or the C. So I could just put another star in there. Isn't that neat? So it's never going to go to waste. Anyway, that was, you, you know, Stephanie, clear beads might work too. Um, anyway, um, that's what I'm going to do. So, you know, Marty, I was going to put the dates and then, I don't know, maybe I'll put them somewhere. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure, but I do like the framing idea. Um, and that's really about it. So it's now been a half an hour, and I haven't sewn anything. But, um, you know, I just wanted to check in with you guys and say hello. And, again, I, I want to thank you all for all of your support and your donations and all that kind of stuff while I was in the hospital. i got to tell you, this damn thing just knocked me out, and it doesn't look like it's clearing up anytime soon. At least I have my my uh, words back, because for the first month or so, I could talk, but I couldn't remember anything. So, um, I'm going to hold the rings on with this pretty uh, silk ribbon that I bought. And it's it's the same color. It matches the, the this. Um, so, uh, anyway, that's that's it. I, uh, I just want to thank you. I, I really... Look, I don't want to, like, oversell it, but I was really dying, and I I couldn't believe that it. it wasn't my kidney that was killing me. It was something else that nobody could find. And um, it really does, you know, people say, why are you always on Facebook and blah, blah, blah. You know what? I know this sounds really weird and antisocial and goofy and all that shit, but knowing that you guys were there pulling for me and just knowing that you guys were there kind of helped me through all this, um, so I don't, I, I just want to thank you. Uh, Fitzy, you said no, exclamation point, thank you, exclamation point, what does that mean? No, thank you, talk to the hand. Um, uh, anyway, I'd like to do this again, and you, I'd like to, uh, I'd like you to know if, from you guys, and you can just email me, um, and let me know if you'd like to do it again, and, um, you know, I have to get my quilt done, and I, 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 I hesitate to just start um, quilting because I feel weird. But I don't, you know what the hell with it. Just try 15 minutes of it, and if it's too boring, then just hang up. God. All right, so that's that. So some of you say with beads, some of you say without beads, and, um, and so you just have to um, write and let me know. Now, I'm going to try to put this, this thing up here. No, see, that's too high. I want you to see what I'm doing, but, hmm. Okay, to be worked out, because I don't think this really works so well. Now, you can see my machine, but you can't see anything else. And who the hell wants to look up there? I mean, that's, that's like looking up somebody's skirt who's wearing iron underwear. Forget about it. Um, uh, yeah, maybe, Fitzy. That would be good. That would be fun. A coffee clatch in the morning. And, of course, you know, during the week and even during the evening. I mean, I have no life. I'm just sitting here shaking and eating. All right. So now I'm going to just do my, my thing. I'm just sewing these. Oh, by the way, you know, I'm doing this Nandu tea, which is this needlework from, I don't think it's down here. Oh, yeah, it is. Hold on. I'll go get it. Um, it's needlework. By the way, don't you just love RFL thread? I This stuff is like butter. Honest to God, I love it. And this RFL thread, the one I'm using, I ran out of the normal color that I used to piece, and I put in, like, uh, from my set, from the Mark Lipinski basic set, I put in another color that I don't really use all that much, and it matches perfectly, which is fabulous for the quilt, <laughs> but not so good for the old man who can't see squat when he needs to rip it out all right <laughs> but it's beautiful i'm like in shock um so anyway i'm doing this thing called nandu key and kidney mary and i last week um just drove to this place in in washington new jersey which is really a neighboring town it's right around the corner and um we were looking uh i was looking for a stained glass store um, oh yeah, Kathleen, Mr. Electric holding the laptop for me. Oh yeah, that would work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, look at all the Lambertville ladies from here who are here from the slow stitching movement. Really, really nice. It's nice to see you all, and I miss you. And I, and by the way, next April is when we're going to have our next slow stitching getaway. I've already talked to Lambertville. Um, 
So anyway, so we went because I wanted to learn, and you might remember if you saw on Facebook, that I wanted to learn how to do those, um, oh, what the hell are they, those charms that, that all the crafters, I mean, you can't swing a dead cat on Etsy without seeing 500,000 of these damn things, but they're, they're glass charms um, that you put whatever you want in them, and then you kind of solder around them, you've seen them, I mean, they're everywhere, and they've been everywhere forever, but I, I am one of these guys that needs to always have a class. I like to see how it's done first and, you know, Craftsy or, you know, YouTube or all those things. They just don't um, do it for me. But anyway, hi, Mary. Kidney Mary Eichler is here. Hi, Kidney Mary. We were just, you just missed the story about St. Padre Pio that I drove you to. But I'm telling the story about uh, going to uh, where we went a couple of weeks ago. So we went to this this um, stained glass place that I knew of. It was the only one I know of around here. Um, who, by the way, how old do I look? Jesus. I I have to give up. You know, I thought, I bleached all this stuff out. And I'll get back to Kitty Mary. But I bleached all this stuff out to make my beard and goatee purple. So I thought that it would grow out. So when my purple left, I was just left with white. And... And here's the thing, it's grown out. I really just have white hair everywhere, which is just bothering me like crazy. And I'm thinking, oh my God, so maybe I'll dye it again in, in um, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it with the color of my original hair, or I don't know, but I'm looking so old and I, I am going to have to get some some plastic surgery, like like this, you know, like I, like the pull here. I need these pulled. I need these wrinkles out. I need. Look at this. Look. You should always have your camera high. That's my point. So maybe next time I'll look more youthful. Or I need to get those. I don't know. I'm going to get a paper clip or something, a binding clip, and put it back here. Look how younger I look like this. Look. look. Speaking of facelifts, I was looking at the trailer for. Um, uh, uh, my big fat Greek wedding too, and Andrea Martin, who is my favorite actress had work and honest to god she looks like a hot mess she completely ruined her face and it just kills me because i love her i would not have recognized her if they didn't have a little chiron saying andrea martin so you cupcakes better not get any facial surgery it's okay if i do because look Look, I've worked with celebrities so long, you can see their veins and their muscles because they've been pulled so tightly. I have so much fat that I can only be pulled so much. So that my issue is either getting fatter um, to get rid of all this, and who gains weight in their forehead, but if there's a way, I'll find it, and or I'm going to have to just, you know, whatever, suck it up. All right, so anyway, we went to the stained glass place because I wanted to learn how to make them. Well, of course, Kidney Mary signs up for like 17,000 years of classes of $500 a pop, and... <laughs> <laughs> but while we were there, this um, Japanese woman was there taking classes, and she's so pretty and just so sweet, and the ladies that were there were really sweet, like, you know, like quilter sweet, like nice ladies, nice ladies, not like crabby or anything. Um, and she, um, although we certainly have those in the court world, Jesus, God, oh my God. So anyway, because um, sometimes you just can't do anything right, but... Um, anyway, she uh, she just got back from Japan the night before I got there. So, see, this is what I'm doing. Just easy peasy piecing. You know, I, I love this thing because I could talk to a cardboard box, as you know. But here's the thing. Um, I know, Facebook's... Uh, I, yeah, you're right. Oh, Donatella, Andrea. Dear God almighty. Even her creator won't recognize her. So, anyway... Um, I don't think I'm going to get much quilting cool done doing this. It's fun. but So anyway, she had just gotten back from Japan, and I had bought this book on um, on this Nandu tea, which is, means spiderweb in Guadani in Paraguay. And when I was living in Paraguay, I actually sat with these ladies at one point, and, and um, they were doing this beautiful needlework, and I wanted to make this lace. Well, now I wanted to make the lace. Then I was adopting Evan, and I had this, like, six-month-old I was carrying, and I didn't even start quilting at that point. And the last thing I wanted to do was start doing stuff with thread and fabric. I mean, what, who would do that? So anyway, um, uh, 
meanwhile, here, 24 years later, I'm like dying to learn this thing, and there's no place to learn it, and I'm not going back to Paraguay. And Evan doesn't really want to go back at all. He doesn't want to meet his birth mother, which I would love to meet. I mean, it's really, I can't believe that he doesn't want to meet his birth mother. I mean, I don't know if you guys were out there and were um, adopted, um, and I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are this what your thoughts are on this, but Evan wants nothing to do with his birth parents and says, you know, she didn't take care of me and she didn't really want me, so, you know, you're my family and, and that's that, and doesn't want to go. Now, I, conversely, used to sit on my front porch waiting for my real family to come along, and I wasn't adopted. So anyway, um, so we get out of the stained glass, uh, well, so we get to the stained glass place, and um, this lady from Japan is there, and I ordered this book. From, it's called Nanduti, N-A-N-D-U-T-I, Joan, and it means spiderweb in Guadani, which is the indigenous language of the Guadani um, Indians in, in Paraguay. It's also, um, interestingly enough, the Spanish brought this lace-making technique called Tenerife, I guess, or that's how one lace-maker said it, but she's a little full of herself. I've always called it Tenerife. But anyway, um, she... <laughs> She, um, they, they brought it to Paraguay, and then the Indians picked it up, and, um, and so they, they kind of made it their own. So anyway, I bought this book. There's only two books. One is boring as hell. You want to kill yourself. And it's, you know, it shows some stuff, but it's more, it, it reads more like, uh, it reads more like a, um, I don't know, like a college dissertation. And then this other one is clearly, you know, in all the Japanese style, just beautifully written and colorful and all. But I don't read Japanese, so I couldn't even figure out what size thread they were using. Um, but I said to this lady, listen, do you, you know, she's Japanese and she just came from Japan. I mean, she's American, but she just came from Japan. I said, do you read Japanese by any long stretch of imagination? I mean, because, you know, we're all from somewhere. I always say I'm Polish and Italian, but God knows, I don't know anything except the swear words. So, um, she said that she did, and so I brought the book to her on Saturday where Mary was there making some, some stained glass, and, um, and so she was able to tell me what I needed. Now, she told me that I needed number eight DMC thread. Mm hmm Which is great, because I just bought... Oops, sorry. A whole rack of other thread that is not number eight DMC thread. Oh, there's Evan peeking through when he was an adolescent. So now I have to get number eight... Um, thread, which is killing me. Oh, and here's like the beginning of some of the de uh, the uh, stuff that I was doing. Hold on. Can you see that? It's just kind of weaving through it. Do you see? I don't know. Maybe that's not a good angle. Let's do it this way with the light. So you just kind of create these circles and uh, and then you just weave your fabric through it or your thread. This is a, I can't figure out how to use this. So this is a little thick, the thread that I'm using, and the DMC is thinner. And uh, my friend Bonnie Espenshade's husband, Ralph, he made this great frame, just like they have in Paraguay. And I love that you have to um, lace it. It's so primitive and so neat, and sometimes, you know, in line with the slow stitching movement, it's really about getting back to the basics, and that's why I really was interested in doing this. And I may even publish a little, um, a little uh, article on it that I had written uh, in the Slow Stitching magazine, which, by the way, is coming out in October, and um, it's due to the publisher by July, and I'm almost finished with it, and I just have to get people paid and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I have a couple more articles to write, and that's that. So look for it on your shelves in October. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's not really a slate frame, Pat, uh, Patricia. I don't know. Do they call you, I? Are you, do they call you Pat Patty? I can't remember. So anyway, um, so anyway, uh, she was able to tell me. She was able to read the uh, 
the Japanese and told me. So now I'm so now I'm looking for you know number eight DMC. It's like three dollars for a tiny little ball of this stuff, and I'm like, oh well, I'll just take one of each, right? Because you know I am a hoarder after all, and. Oh, then it ended up being like five hundred, six hundred dollars. So I'm flat broke, and you know what? I'm up. I even said to my friend Bonnie, "I am not buying one more thing other than groceries and gas until I can get back to work." I'm really not. I mean, and I'm one of those guys. I don't put stuff on credit cards, and I never have since I was twenty three, and I got caught in that. Um, than anything that isn't rude or calls me 300. All right, 400. Um, so um, I'm just not going to do it. I'm one of those guys who I have to say that I can't. Oh, bye, Rachel. Thanks for coming, and I love you, and we should have lunch soon. Um, but I, if I don't have the money, I don't buy it. And like I pay off my credit cards every single month. Now, you know, needless to say, my hi, Joan. Oh, look, Joan. Look what I have right here. Mm -hmm. It, your your tools just kill me. I love it. And also, this is not only great so you don't burn your fingers. This is uh, Joan Holly's tools. It's not only great so you don't burn your fingers. But I can tell you something, my dear. It's terrific um, to whip up some batter. I got to tell you, I I love this tool. It's good for everything. So I can eat. So whatever. The only thing I can't do is pick my teeth. All right. So you're gonna have to work on that. Um, Suki, I don't know. I, you know, some people are saying they can't see the picture, but I think that it's a matter of your server or maybe the age of your computer or your Wi-Fi, something like that, because many people can can see it. So, anyway, um, so I, I'm not spending anything. I, if I don't have it, I don't spend it, and I want zero. Zero credit card and Jeff feels the same way. We are just getting by this. Do you know I had one doctor not to complain? I mean, I'm a living right, but I had one doctor who I had seen maybe three or four times in the three months that I was in the hospital and only for rounds. It was $140,000 just for him. That's not medication. My um, my medical bill just for the room was 200,000 more than what I paid for my house. So I'm telling you, I'm broke, and I and I have good insurance, and I'm still broke. Thanks for, thank you to again all of you who really helped me through that Kickstarter campaign with that Liza and um, Meg Cox, Liza Lucy and Meg Cox started. It really was a lifesaver because the last thing you need to do when you can't walk is, uh, you know, worry about that. Anyway, um, so. Uh, so now I know what to do, but I'm not spending $500 on, on size 8 um, DMC. Dear God, I, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to start peeling apart coconut strings and putting them together. Why not, right? Anyway, um, that's it. So, uh, okay, so let me know again if you want to. Oh, Kathleen is going to church, so she can't really um, be here. But Kathleen, if you, any of you else are going to church, you know, I'm not really a church goer. I'm more of a spiritual guy who, like, says the rosaries. Um, please say prayers for me, because I love prayers. I love prayers. And as a matter of fact, I'm not really a prayer, again, except the rosary, which I've been saying for a long time. But, um, but... I just want you to to know that I have, as a result of my own crisis here, uh, started a prayer log. I know it's really weird. Marie Boswick, if you're there, I know you just fainted cold dead on the floor. But I just write down, Alicia, what color DMC do I need? I need every color. I need every color. What do you mean? There's 300 of them or 250. I want all of them. So anyway, um, oh, Ruth, buy one or two at a time. That's like eating one or two donuts at a time. I can't do it. I need the dozen. Um, so anyway, um, <laughs> I really do, honestly. If I pulled up this sweatshirt right now, you, the first thing that would come to mind is like, oh my God, he's not so fat. You'd think, oh my God, what is an ocean animal doing in his dining room? Um, so, uh, anyway, I, 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 I have a list, and when people I read on Facebook say, you know, we need prayers and all that kind of stuff, oh, happy anniversary, Joanne, have a great brunch, and um, have a side of beef for me, will you? So, um, uh, anyway, um, I don't even remember what I was saying, but uh, I can't remember what I was talking about. It doesn't really matter, does it? 
Anyway, uh, let me keep it sewing here because I've gotten one strip done. Um, so anyway, that's that. So I want all of them, and that's that. And I just won't. I'm not buying anything else. I'm just not. And you know what? Here's the thing. I don't really. Get, I mean, I'm sure most of you are around my age. I'm. I'm a lot older than a lot of you. But uh, oh, the prayer thing. So anyway, I have a little list of prayers. Thanks, Marcia. Somebody's listening. I have a little thing of prayer, a list of prayer. And when I see people saying we need prayers or whatever, I put you on my list. And when I'm done with my rosary, I say everybody's name. All right, so if you're a believer, great. If you're not a believer, great. Sometimes I'm a believer, sometimes I'm not. And uh, that's that. Oh, Jen, I use, um, I use Baby Lock. And I have to tell you something about Baby Lock, if I may. Um, I absolutely love it. I, I, you know, first of all, here's the truth in there. Do you want to know the truth? Again, it's a secret because if any of these suits here, they'll all be like bitching and moaning, but I don't care. So when Jody Davis and I were co-hosting um, Quilt Out Loud, right, Baby Lock, we get this email saying Baby Lock is going to be a, um, a sponsor. And I'm like, baby lock? I'm like, oh, shit. Who wants I want a real machine. I mean, just the name alone turned me off. I'm like, well, that's not a real machine. You know, baby lock. I mean, everybody's using Ninas and, uh, oh, you know, you know, whatever. Vikings and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, baby lock? No way. And I was a fassy. I bought my first machine. was a, My first two machines were fast. So I'm like, oh, that means I'm going to have to use a baby lock. Um. Oh, hey, Pat, I don't care if you're Jewish. I'm saying the rosary for you anyway, so what the hell? It's going all to the same place. Um, by the way, I thought it was very interesting that the, the Sufis in the Islams also uh, venerate the Virgin Mary, which I think was very weird and neat. All right, so anyway, Baby Lock was, um, I'm like, I don't want to do Baby Lock. Well, so they gave us the Aspire because we had to use them and we had to travel with them when we were doing our segments for those five years. And I... Honest to God, I love this baby lock so much. I can't tell you, I have never been happier with any other machine. And I've used them all in all the classes and where I go and where I go and whatever. And they're all good. Look, they're all good machines. And, you know, I covet the one. What is that one up in, um, oh, they're headquartered in New Jersey. And I can't remember. Janome. The, oh, that new Janome that looks like a, it looks like a uh, rocket ship. I covet it. I, I covered it because I am a someone who likes everything, right? But um, I, I have to tell you, this baby lock, I have never had a minute problem with it. It is wonderful. It, it's so smooth and quiet, and, and, and um, it, it's easy to clean. It's really easy to work because, you know, I, I, the, the, um, the feet are really available. They're affordable. Uh, there's everything, everything, it's quiet, it has every bell and whistle that you can imagine, and I have the mid-size, I mean, they have bigger sizes too, which I just also adore, uh, but I never thought I would use a baby lock, never in a million years, and now, every time it burns and I, excuse me, have an event together, we're both fighting over the baby lock, <laughs> and she wins because she's a sponsor, she's a baby lock sponsor, and I'm just a baby lock lover, but um, I, I love it, and you know what, here's the deal, Unless you are, well, I was going to say, unless you're a professional. I'm a professional. But the truth of the matter is, even a professional, here's what you need if you're a quilter. Unless you're an art quilter or something, blah, 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 blah. You need something that gives you a good quarter of an inch and something you feel comfortable with. So I'm not saying, um, I'm not saying that you have to have a baby lock. I'm just saying, for me, that's the machine I use since you ask. And, and since you ask, I thought, since I'm talking anyway, I might as well just tell you why I like it. I, um... And you know, I you know that's funny. Who says they have the vintage? Oh, Helen Marie, you like your vintage uh, um, singers. Well, I have a, I have a couple of what are those things called? The featherweights. You know, I have them redone. My friend Amy Bell Buehler, if you're still here, she repairs them and helps clean them and stuff like that. And I have never used it. I just keep it like as this trophy. And then when I was in North Dakota teaching, this woman named Will, I was there, and she had hers all. Um, she had all hers, like, pimped out, you know, with, like, it was purple and navy. Oh, my God. It was absolutely gorgeous. And so one day when I hit the lottery, I'm going to have mine all pimped out. But I was thinking I would like to turn mine into a Hello Kitty one. I really would. I'd put the decals. I'd have it, like, a big 
kitty pink with big white kitty faces and kitty everything. Um, because I, first of all, I love Hello Kitty. And um, I think it would work well on a featherweight. So there you go. And if somebody after I'm six feet under or or in the pyre or whatever the hell they're doing with me, well, they can't burn me. Can you imagine the grease fire? But anyway, um, they would, uh, you know, I, I they could just take it apart and redo it in something else, right? So I'd say, Hello Kitty featherweight. That's what I'm talking about. So... Uh, I actually have my blog just about written, and it's been so long. Now, I don't know why I have the energy today, and remember I started out with the shakes? Look, no shakes. Isn't that weird? Oh, by the way, look at these. Oh, it's little shakes. Look at these finger, just on the left hand. Look at these fingernails. You know what? For 135 years, I was a, a um nail biter. Oh my God. I didn't know anybody who bit their nails more than me except Meredith Vieira. And you know, both of our fingers looked exactly the same. We would both like maniacally bite our fingernails. And then a couple of years ago, right before my kidney, I got this thing called Stevens Johnson. You might remember my mouth was like, ah, you don't even want to see the pictures of that. I had holes in my tongue and oh, so I couldn't bite my nails anymore, which was horrible because I have such oral fixations, maybe because I wasn't breastfed. I have no idea. So anyway, um, I decided that um, I had to stop. I had to stop biting my nails. Well, don't you know, that's like four years. Look, and now biting my nails seems so weird. But also what seems weird is trimming your nails. I don't really like nails. Like when I close my um, hands, I can feel them. Look, watch, I close my hands. Look, there's nail holes. I don't, well, look, it could be a stigmata. But anyway, um, I have really been um, amazed. And for the first time in like 60 years, even though I'm only in my 50s, but the first time in 60 years, I'm able to pick up a dime. I can pick up a needle. I can pick up stuff. <laughs> You know, to be honest with you, I never really picked up anything but a Big Mac. So this is really quite a, a feat for me to get, get a dime or a, or a nickel or a penny or something out of on the floor. It's really kind of fun. So do many of you bite your nails? Norma, you bite your nails, right? Oh, and then you took up, oh, you bite your nails because you took up the ukulele. Well, I understand that. Well, I have a ukulele, believe it or not, upstairs that I had to have and I've never used. Also, I have a, oh, oh, I know what I have upstairs, which is just, insane and maybe one day some one of you could teach me but i when i watched the johnny cash story you know that one with um oh that actress with the big forehead what's her name you know what i'm talking about the blonde um oh you know you know that one that blonde oh hi teresa thank you you love me i love you too um i love everybody even though like the people who hate me because i don't really give a shit really if you hate me that's your issue not my issue all right so um i love everybody so um oh walk the line that's right uh garen it was walk the line um anyway she played that auto harp well of course i immediately went out and got an auto harp and um and it was yeah reese witherspoon um, don't you know who I am? See, wouldn't that have been interesting if she asked me? Because, no, I don't know who the hell you are. So, anyway, um, uh, so, she, thanks, Garen, she, and Lillian. So, she, yeah, Melissa, that's right, Reese. Yep, Joan, Reese, Reese, Witherspoon. But I don't use a spoon. I use a Joan Hawley tool to stir my oatmeal and batter. So, anyway, um, I have to tell you that uh, I had to have an auto heart. Now I have it, and by the way, it was missing some strings, and it has all kinds of music like Amazing Grace and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> which of course, you know, God forbid I start playing Amazing Grace. Talk about Pickle Road going up in a puff of smoke. But um, anyway, uh, I had to have it. So now I have a ukulele because I wanted to play Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which of course I never will. And then I have, and, and by the way, you guys, this is another... Um, what am I doing here? Yeah, this will work. So uh, this is another thing I want to talk to you about. It's it's really about that, you know, you never know the last, my, I had a, many of you don't know this, but I, long, long before Mr. Electric, I was in a long-term relationship with someone uh, in the 80s and early 90s, well, it ended um, in the very early 90s, who died of AIDS. And um and I remember when he was in the hospital the last time, uh, and he said to me, um, 
you know, you know, he was laying there, and he and he made this agreement with the doctor to stop all treatment because, you know, at that point he was way beyond you know the typical aid stuff. He was starting to get cancer, and they were going to amputate his private parts. And I mean, it was just ugly, and he had no weight. He looked like a, a corpse as it was. And he said to me, um, and we we had already broken up before that, but you know, we were still close, and I was at the hospital even when he took his last breath, but. Uh, he had said to me, um, you know, you never know the last time you're going to put on your blue jeans. You never think about, oh, this might be the last time I put on my blue jeans. And, and that always stuck with me. And so I hope that sticks with you because you don't know. And so you got to do what you got to do. And so I want you to do that. Oh, Joyce is frozen. Joyce is frozen. What, <laughs> shall I sing the song? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether I can do that song. Honestly, I can sing the song to you, but I may have to just start screaming. Uh, <laughs> I've had it. Oh, by the way, Linnell, yeah, Pittsburgh. We're thinking about Pittsburgh, but on my blog, I have something very special to show you, and that will be coming out either tonight or tomorrow, so make sure you see it. It's about Pittsburgh, and it's something that Karen Montgomery sent me, uh, the famous culture Karen Montgomery. Um, and I love it, and I can't wait to get my hands on, uh, to do some uh, fun stuff with it. Anyway, guy, oh, let it go, let it go! Ah! Um, and sometimes that's an earworm, isn't it horrible? So anyway, you guys, some of you are freezing, some of you can't see me, some of you got, if it's not working, just hang up and come back if you're interested. Anyway, that's that. Um, anything anybody wants to talk about? Any questions you want to ask me, ask me a question, and I will be happy to give you an answer, because I'm just doing nothing but sewing. You know, Andy, I would love to move to California, but here's the deal. I have property, a pool, three, uh, three floors, um, a basement um, in a great neighborhood, an expensive neighborhood in an uh, uh, old house, uh, uh, over 100 years old, it's an old farmhouse. If I got top dollar, I couldn't afford 300 square foot apartment in, in California, not for where I want to live, because I don't want to live inland. I want to live like in San Diego or right outside of San Diego or, you know, San Francisco, something like that. And it's just impossible. So, you know, what, I'm, what am I going to say? So, um, I know, Cindy, I, 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 Sin, it is killing me. Uh, Sin Ho says I have a lot of energy today. And I'm actually hearing myself and I'm thinking this is how I used to talk when I wasn't sick. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, here's what's going to happen, and I can tell you right now, it's early. You wait. By 2 o'clock, I am going to have my feet in traction, and I'm going to be dead asleep. That's what's going to happen, because that's what happens. Oh, now that Aardvark is closed, what quilt shops am I going to? Well, none. Uh, first of all. I have more fabric than uh, than uh, Patch Hella Mile, as they used to say in Pittsburgh, and um, and you know I had so many collections of the fabric that I designed. You know, I other than stuff that I made quickly without much thought for a quilt market or for magazines, I have never used that fabric. So now I'm just gonna, I'm just doing stuff that I love now. I, that's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. So, uh, there is a new quilt shop that opened on Route 10. I don't know what it's called. I do know that she bought, uh, before they opened, they bought quite a bit of Aardvark's stock. So, if you're a fan of Aardvark, you're going to love this joint. And if you're not a fan of Aardvark, you might not like it. But, um, you know, I think it's a good idea to start a new shop. So, she's in Hanover. It's called, it's in Hanover. I don't know what it's called. Um, uh, so... Uh, I, ha I have not been there. So my closest shop would be uh, Pennington, which is a little over an hour from me. Um, and I love quilting. Uh, I think it's called, what is that, Pennington Quilts? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I, I love it. But um, I just can't, you know, it's just far for me. It's far. Um, also, I have so many projects that I'm working on right now, I, I don't really need to go. And the projects that I do for, um, it's called So Jersey, Alicia. You like it? You like it, huh? Maybe I'll have to go. Um, Elizabeth, I'm from uh, the west side of Pittsburgh. I grew up in Crafton Heights and then moved when I was in 10th or 11th grade out to um, 
the Hanky Farms Oakdale area, you know that area? And I graduated from there. I went to all Catholic schools in Pittsburgh. St. Philip uh, Canavan High School, Can Bishop Canavan, and then finally West Allegheny, which I love, which I was afraid to go to West Allegheny because it was a public school. And you know, for like 13, you know, for all those years, the nuns kept saying, listen, if you can't make it here, and if you're bad here, and if you don't quit talking, we're gonna send you to the public school where all the bad kids are. We, you know, we don't have to keep you. You pay tuition, which, of course, so when I went to, uh, okay, Alicia, we can meet there. Um, uh, and you know, Helen Marie, I like Old City Quilts, but, you know, that's like two hours for me, and that's really too far. I just can't go there. I went there once with, um, oh, with Bean, because I took her. She won an auction, and part of her auction was she got to spend a couple of days with me. We did a shop hop, and we went there, and I loved Old City. It was just so far. Um... Uh, anyway, um, so uh, when I went to the Catholic, when I went to the public school, I have to tell you guys, and I, it's, excuse my French, but I was scared shitless, because here's this gay boy going to this, like, public school out, out, you know, in the farm areas. At that time, it was farm, now it's suburb, and I was scared to death, <laughs> as it turned out, I was the bad one. How do you like that? Um, yeah, Budding Star is very close to me, and I'll go there in an emergency, but they never really have any... I shouldn't really be saying anything. They don't really... I have more fabric than they have, so I'm not going. And also, you know, when you design um, quilts and stuff, uh, you want the modern stuff, you know, the new stuff, so you're, you know, you contact the manufacturer um, if you're going to be doing it for, you know, a magazine or whatever, and that's really the only time I... I design quilts now at this point. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to sell my quilts. I have like a gazillion quilts and I just don't, I don't want them. They're just sitting around, you know, and I know that uh, Baby Dumplin isn't going to want them. So I think I just need to get rid of the damn quilts. That's what I think. So anything else? I love the Dakotas. I was in North Dakota and I love, I was in, where was I? Was I in Wyoming, I guess? <clears throat> yeah, I loved it. Just loved it. Do I have any advice on how to sell my textile designs beyond Spoonflower? That's interesting because I think that, well, don't get me started because now you're going to hear all this shit on here. I, first of all, fabric companies are very reluctant these days, as well they should be because there's probably too many of them, um, to take on any new designers unless it's something fabulous. And, and, by the way, they'll take on new designers if it's really shitty as long as you have a big following on Facebook or blog or whatever. Because that's how they're selling their fabric at this point. Right? So, um, you could be a really crappy designer and have a, a line because... Well, I, look at me. The only reason I have lines is because I had the magazine. As soon as the magazine went, so did I. So that was that. Um, uh, so, unless you have some kind of name, uh, I think it's very difficult uh, to get a, a line going right now. And... P.S. I think that's true also for the quilt books, which, by the way, by my mind, they all look alike again. Uh, there was a time, you know, they go into, um, you know, seasons where sometimes something new will come out, like Victoria Finley Wolf's, for instance. Hers was like kind of groundbreaking, or or the the One Block Wonder, or well, that was a pattern which I love, but that was kind of groundbreaking at the time, or or Kathy's um, Take Five quilt, or the stack and whack or dear Jane. These are things that were different at the time, but now they're all looking alike. And I have a hunch, by the way, I think the stuff that um, is going to be coming back is going to be the primitive. And I have a lot of reasons why, um, <laughs> why it's going to come back, but I'm not telling you here because it would be, it sounds, um, not good. And <laughs> I have opinions. I have opinions, but I'm not telling you here. So I love the One Block Wonder. That was a lot of fun in those times, in those olden days, right? Yeah. And you're right, Lois. Everything old is new again. But here's the thing. And I love that everything old is new again. I just don't like that everybody thinking that they recreated it. Now they're like, you know, I'm like, really? I mean, that just slays me. You know, for everything that I see online with these, like, new, I don't want to be like an ass, but with these, like, new celebrities. And again, I did not make my career on being a great designer. I made my career on writing and, and attitude. So that's where it's going. And kind of, like, shaking up the quilt world. Um, 
you know, I love this stuff. They're like, oh, did you see this? Did you see that? Did you see this? Oh, yeah, I did see it 20 damn years ago. So <laughs> whatever. You know, look, I'm on the other side of the mountain now. I'm old. I'm old. So, um, you know, I, I'm not as um, impressionable and I'm not as, uh, you know, I'm not as... You know, I'm not as impressed unless I see something that really stands out. And, you know, that's probably true for all of us at, uh, around this age. You know, that's what makes uh, theater critics and movie critics and music critics critics because you've seen so much and you've experienced so much uh, over the years that when something is new and different, it hits you immediately. Otherwise, it's just all white noise. That's, that's what I think. So um, that's that. And I have all my books, too, Lois, from the 70s and 80s. Well, no, I didn't start till the 80s, I guess, late 80s. Or, I guess, no, I guess it was like 92 when I started. Anyway, um, uh, and boy, I miss your shop. That was a shop. That was a shop. Um, anyway, that's that. Um, I'm getting rid of all this shit. I'm telling you right now, I'm getting rid of it. And that's something that's also interesting for people our age, which is, you know, we spend our lifetime collecting stuff, and then we, um, then we, <laughs> you know, right now, I, I don't know how many dishes I have. I use two mugs. <laughs> I don't know how many, you know, uh, serving trays and uh, glasses and you name it. And I, you know, I, we don't really use it. So I'm getting rid of it. And I'm also getting rid of all of the, all of my quilting stuff. I mean, most of it. I, what I would really love because I'm, I'm now house, you know, room bound by stuff. And most of it is because of the magazine. And, you know, I felt like I couldn't get rid of it and I couldn't sell it and I couldn't, you know, I didn't want to, I couldn't donate it at the time. It was just very uh, odd. And, um, and so, uh, I would really like at some point to get a couple of, uh, you know, some quilters in here or some, you know, fabric artists in here and just kind of tell me what I can get rid of because I can't do it myself. I think it's just too hard. So that's that. So, and I am totally heading back to hand stitching Lois, totally. The cross stitch, uh, my legacy quilt is all hand done. So, and that's what I'm going to concentrate on from May until uh, the end of the year or whenever I'm off this medication. Um, so that's that. But not like Jenny Bach, who threw away like 5,000 bags that I saw on, on Facebook, I'm going to get rid of my stuff. And it, yeah, right. So anyway. Yeah, it does feel like a noose around your neck, Ruth. It does. I think that it frees us creatively to get rid of this stuff. So off it goes. And I also have, you know, I I stocked up right after I got well, or, you know, started to get well on several projects that I want to do, creative art projects that I want to do that feed my soul and not the, you know, for business, not for you, not for the, the industry, for me. And I'm really excited to do those. But first I have to get through some perfunctory, um, you know, uh, agreements that I made, one being the magazine, and then, of course, my um, biography, which is really scary, but whatever. Yeah, you know, Alicia, I was thinking about a quilter yard sale. That's another good thing. Um, Lisa, I'm not sure I want to try crazy quilting. That's kind of not my, th it's just not my thing, but I have to tell you, the, um, the felting and stuff that you did is just so magnificent that I was so tempted to start buying roving and stuff. And then I thought, you know, you better stop it because you're going to just make an, you're making mouse nest. You're buying mouse nest material because you know you're never going to use it. <laughs> Uh, oh, Allie Aller is a great, she's terrific. Oh, so anyway, my dear, I, I was only going to talk for a, a half an hour, and it's an hour and 12 minutes. I could probably, oh, Mary, you still have those magazines? A lot of people do. A lot of people still have the Quilters Home, the original, the ones that I did. Um, and, uh, you know, it's interesting, because I have one copy of each, and I I looked at them the other day. I For me, they, eh, they were okay. <laughs> they were great for what they were because they completely broke the mold. <clears throat> but um, I don't know. I, I'm in a different part of my life now, I think. Uh, Donna, he's fine. He's living uh, about a half an hour from here. He's working. I'm going to be going to school again in the fall. And, um, you know, 
He's okay. I'd like to hear from him more, but, you know, he's one of those kids that doesn't call all the time. I had, I went to college with a bunch of those kind of kids. Uh, I was not one. I was kind of addicted to calling home every three minutes. Um, but, yeah, that's him. So I guess if I hear, <laughs> as long as I hear that he's not dead, if I look in the newspaper and he hasn't died, I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> So, anyway, um, anyway, anyway, that's that. Um, uh, so, do you think we should do this again? I guess that's the question. And um, when would work for you? I think Sunday mornings would be great. I think it would be great. Maybe I'll bring some friends over, too, and we'll, uh, we'll eat in front of you. <laughs> True to your daughter's wedding picture. Um, I... I, I am assuming I did. I mean, honestly, that was, what, eight years ago? I'll check. I'll check. Do you remember what the article was for? Just write me privately. I'll check to see if it was there. Um, uh, let's see. Anything else? Marsha Hahn, how's everything going with you? It's been so long since I talked to you. You know, I've always been a great fan of yours, so I'm glad to see you here. Um... All right, Bonnie Green. Oh, there's Bonnie Green Espinchada. She's my partner in crime. She's the one that I talk to every day. And by the way, if you ever want to call me, FaceTime me. Do not call me. If we FaceTime, I can get stuff done. If you don't FaceTime, I can't. But poor Bonnie has seen me. Half the time, I don't have underwear on. So, <laughs> but she doesn't know that. So, oh, and I do have pants on now, just so you know. Um, so anyway, that's that. Uh, yeah, Andrea, I am into English paper piecing. As a matter of fact, I just bought some boxes because I'm doing this glorious color or this glorious hexagon thing. And um, I'm doing this uh, glorious hexagon thing, and it is, I have so many fabrics now. I, I've just been collecting them. I'm going through my own stash. Um, uh, I was given some fabric um, by a, a dear, sweet little... Morristown Pickle, you know who you are, and she's here, and um, uh, anyway, uh, this is, uh, so I have it, but you know, I, again, I've been on deadline with a lot of stuff, so I really haven't done it in, in several uh, weeks or a month, so I have it all, and I it's all organized, it's all ready to go, it's organized by color, and so, um, so Jill Edwards, I'll be doing it soon. And actually, Joe, maybe, I don't know who else is doing glorious uh, hexagons. Maybe one day you want to come over and, and just spend a day doing it with me. I have the templates and the book and everything. So just come on over. Um, anyway, hi, Karen Guterman, the author. I heard that you, you mentioned me in your, your lecture, and I just want to thank you. That was very sweet. It's nice when people... Um, say stuff. I, I try to always mention who who kind of inspired me or got me started, but somebody said, you know, she was here. You know, they also tell if you say some, if you're talking smack or throwing shade, but uh, so you got to be careful. I got in trouble with, I'm not telling who, once or twice. So anyway, um, <laughs> um, anyway, thank you. Um, who, who just planted, you planted cucumber seeds this week. Oh, the pickle recipe was for me. Yeah, that's a pretty good pickle recipe, isn't it? I have to tell you the truth. I like that. But, you know, here's something that I I, I want to try that I haven't, and that is cold pickles. Does that make sense? Um, rather than, you know, my grandmother used to make, like, sweet and sour, and they were hot, and they were put in, you know, blah, 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 blah. But there's some cold process, and I want to try that. Oh, Sherry, forget it. I, I, honestly, I'm still in January. Honestly, Sherry says that she's behind in Glorious Hexagons. Glorious Hexagons may be finished maybe finished in, I don't know, I'm thinking, well, I mean, realistically, maybe 2083. So that's what I'm doing. Oh, Jill, wouldn't that be fun if you came over? Wouldn't that be, I'll make some stuff and we can eat and do it and maybe we'll get a couple of other people. That would be fun. I would love that. We'll have to make a date. Here's the problem. I just don't know when I feel well. Like today, I feel pretty good. But like, you know, this past week, yesterday or the day before was hell. I literally just, not yesterday, I think it was Friday, Thursday and Friday. I couldn't move, so. Um, yeah, they were bread and butter pickles, Helen Marie, and I love the bread and butter pickles. Well, of course, why wouldn't I? Because it's just cucumbers with sugar on them. Um, yeah, I love them. <laughs> you know, I also like cauliflower with sugar on it. You put sugar on it, daddy's eating it, and he will brag about it. Um, 
also, you had been asking me about my bread recipes and what I used for the um, uh, my my grandmother's uh, lemon cookie recipe and for the uh, what else? Uh, there was something else. The bagel recipe. So all of those will be coming on the blog as well. All right. So that's that. Boy, we've had tons and tons of people coming in and out of here today, and I'm thrilled that you were all here. Um, uh, again, I could keep talking. I guess I could keep talking. What the heck? Oh, by the way, do you like this format, or would you like? Do you think you might like um, Periscope, or maybe I'll do both? Maybe I'll do one here and one Periscope. Who knows? I have no idea. But um, okay, so let's see. So next Sunday at eleven, I guess, is when I'll do, maybe I'll do it during the week too if I get bored. I mean, listen, I could talk, and I'm just working. So, yeah, Joy, I really like lemon. I really like lemon. I tried doing. Um, no, Jill, I don't want to do cooking with Mark. And the last thing I want to do is um, do a demo. Ugh. First of all, I'm not set up to do a demo. Oh, I'm just using, uh, turning on my reliable iron. I'm not set up to do a demo, uh, you know, and so I, that means I'm going to have to do, you know, hold it and how do you knead bread and hold the thing. It's just like a big, it's just crazy. You know, Maria, I have to tell you, I got the recipe for the bagels. I mean, it's the same recipe that my grandmother and I used to use, and they're all similar. But I, you know, I took this recipe and then added my own thing um, that I remember doing, and they were delicious. I have to say that I haven't had a really good bagel like that in years and years and years. And so, and they're so easy, and this particular recipe only made like six or eight, you know, um, depending on how big you like them. So, um... So I'll, I'll share that recipe. It was really, it was really good. It was good. I love them. Um, I need to make, um, good. So you think this Facebook thing is easy. I have to figure out how to get my fan page to know that it's here too. I mean, you guys, I just told you pretty quickly, but, um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. That's, Oh, I forgot. I lost my train of thought, of course, because I'm just so damn old. But, uh, oh, so this next time I'm going to make them, because Jeff ate them all. I only had two, and Jeff had the rest. Uh, I think I'm going to make his favorite, which is, what is it called? Everything bagel, which I loathe. Garlic and onion and poppy seed and salt and all that stuff. Um, I hate it. So, anyway. Oh, by the way, you know what? I could also use this while I'm in transit. So, I mean... I don't mean while I'm driving. I mean, um, you know, when I go visit Mary, Kidney Mary at her um, stained glass class or I go to a new quilt shop or whatever, we could all go together. So I'll just kind of let you know. So keep looking. I also think, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a way that you can get alerts that I'm actually on or doing it or there's a new one. So... Um, Again, this is live, and I love talking to all of you, Maureen and Peggy and Ruth and Mary and Joanna and Sherry and Helen Marie and Joan and Stephanie. I really, and everybody who's been here, Jill and, uh, you know, the works, Linda Lumdebono and Marsha Hahn, everybody. Um, so I love that you're here, and um, I just think it might be fun to do, you know, so whatever. So if it works, then you can tell your friends. Can you subscribe, Linda Lumdebono? Did you see that somewhere? Oh, it does. Okay, good, Karen. Karen Evans uh, Ennis. Karen Evans Ennis. We'll just call her Key. Um, she says that uh, the alerts come up to click. So click. It's kind of fun. Uh, Judy wants to know if I ever made raisin yeast. Raisin yeast? Is yeast made of raisins? Is that right? I don't know. Oh, Kelly, you have uh, cranberry almond scones. Oh, my God, that sounds good. I love a scone. Listen, sugar and flour. Mm, that, what more is there, right? That's nothing else. Let's see. Yeah, there's a message to subscribe. So why don't you subscribe? I don't know what I'm doing it. But I think this is also saved, so you could watch it anyway. But I think it's more fun. <laughs> yeah, darn it. It is like Romper Stomper. Stomper boo. And, um... And I, right, I do see Linda Linda Bono. She's not far. Anyway, <laughs> and I see you all. Um, so anyway, I think that might be fun. Uh, yeah, Mona is here also. There you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, 
can you get, Maureen wants to know if I ever thought of doing a live webcam on YouTube. I'm not really sure what, what that means. I Look, I'm so new to this. Um, I don't know, but I think this is awfully fun. Somebody else told me about something. I can't remember what it was. They told me, they wrote to me today and, and told me about something else that I might be interested in. So I'll kind of take a look at that as well. But I, I think we should all play and see what works best for all of us. Uh, I saw, I said Mona, not Minna, Mona. <laughs> Your secret is sour cream for what? For for the uh, scones, Kelly? Is that your secret? I like sour cream in everything. So, um, okay, so Melissa, you're planning on Brookies this afternoon using frozen assets. I picked up a peppermint cookie dough. What's Brookies? I don't know what that is. You'll have to tell me what that is. You know, Anita, I think there are some really good uh, bagel shops too. There's even one in my town. I mean, I could literally spit on it. I'm so close. But um, I, I like my homemade ones better, just like the bread. I don't think I'll ever buy bread again. Now, here's the thing. Um, when I made the bread the other day, uh, or, you know, I have been making it for the last month, I guess, or so, and the first one was that, yeah, Linnell, I know Bonnie Hunter does Quilt Camp. I mean, I, somebody had just told me about that again today, and I don't know what program she uses, and I've never been, and I would love to just hang out with Bonnie for a little while. Uh, oh, okay, Mary Lou, it's a cross between a cookie and a brownie. Hmm. Well, if you can find a cross between... <laughs> between a cookie and a leg of lamb, I'm in. So, um, uh, I think that, um, oh, so, of course, when I first started making the bread, I mean, we were flying through the bread, we were eating it every day with every meal, and then the same with the, uh, with the cinnamon raisin bread. Uh, no, I don't use a bread making machine, and I have a bread making machine, and Jeff has a bread making machine, you know, it was two households coming together a hundred years ago, and now they're both antiques, and I, I don't like it, first of all. The loaf of bread is something I would eat with breakfast, not so like, but anyway, to say, you know, at first it was a novelty and it tasted really good and different, and so we were eating it a lot, all the time, and now we're just not. So now, I, you know, I thought, uh, one of you told me that, that this bread freezes well, and it does, because we don't eat it fresh, because we're not sandwich eaters, frankly, so, um, and it makes terrible, just for the record, the homemade bread makes terrible, um, uh, well, this particular homemade bread makes terrible garlic bread. So we only use it for, like, breakfast and toast and stuff now. Um, oh, oh, I just got a thing. I'm, I'm done. I only have three minutes before they're knocking me off. Anyway, I'll see you next Sunday for sure at 11 a.m. And this was a lot of fun, and thanks for being with me. And, and maybe I'll get three more scripts done before now and, next, now and next Sunday. So thanks for being here. I love you all. Thanks for spending time with me and watching me shake and watching me talk and watching me just whatever. And, um, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Now I think I've worked up quite an appetite, and um, <laughs> that's that. And I still have so many more damn strips to do. And then I have to cut out that hair and, and all the stuff that I showed you earlier. Next week I hope to have the whole thing done, and I will be showing you um, – Actually, I'll be quilting it at that point, and I have another idea for the quilt. So that's it. So I guess they only let you on for an hour and a half. I love you all. Thanks. Stay in touch and let your friends know. I'll be here next week. See ya. Bye, everybody. Can you see? I don't know where the hell to look on this damn camera.